what the heck is going on with this red gem box? It's the only one of its kind in the entire game. There are no other red gem boxes. And puzzlingly, it's the lowest value gem in the entire game. You'd think this would be the most common one. Furthermore, it's in the very end of the game, the second to final homeworld, tucked away in one of the largest levels down in a small, insignificant grassy atoll, surrounded by other more valuable gems, enemies, and geriatric fairies. So, what's going on with this box and why is it there? Well, to be more specific, it's not a box, it's a spring chest. The red spring chests. Spring chests grow in value as you progress through the various homeworlds of the game, going through the blue, yellow, and illustrious purple gems that are worth so much more than the kind of poverty red and green gems. Ugh. You sort of kind of put those off to the side and you don't really think about them. You're going for those more valuable ones as you progress through the game. So it's quite jarring when you finally get near the very end and see your first red spring chest. Again, the red is the least valuable of them all. So thinking about it as a developer, why not take one of those red gems off the floor and combine it with the red spring chest to make a green spring chest? It's the same value, you end the level with the same amount of gems, and you save one actor object on the level. Makes sense to me, and I think that's exactly what the developers did for every other level up until this point. Hear me out. The June and July 1998 prototypes of Spyro the Dragon show levels that have gem layouts which are mostly fully realized. However, there's a few levels where there's actually more gems than you would expect, leading you to believe that the developers originally intended to have more low-value gems sprinkling the land, whether they be in spring chests or boxes or just sitting there on the floor. Take a look at a level like Dry Canyon, though it is minute, there is a couple of extra red gems there. However, this prototype build was made days before the game's final release, and in that time they had to add in dragon dialogue, music tracks, as well as a slew of other bug fixes and mechanics for Spyro just to tweak them and make them into the fucking perfect 3D platformer that we know today. So, how else are you going to save space on the disc for all that? Well, you gotta consolidate some of those smaller gems into larger value gem boxes and crates. So it's a simple fix, but I think it's one that really saved the development and the memory space for a game like Spyro 1 to exist and to come together in such a low, relatively low bug state that we see it in uh, in its final form. Now with levels like Lofty Castle, where it seems like they didn't go back through it with a fine tooth comb, we can see issues of lag going over loading zones where inputs drop. This level is known to be a total doozy in speedruns because you can actually lose your inputs depending on where you go. And so some of these later game levels didn't quite get the same treatment as a level like Dry Canyon, where they're able to kind of go back through and take things out and really kind of do the whole lag reduction thing. This game was built under a crunch, but the red spring chest in Lofty Castle, it remained. It persevered gloriously like a soldier, representing a time of a development cycle past. It's truly an antique and an anomaly, a marvel and something special, just like you. But that's just a theory. I mean, what do you guys think? Am I right? Am I wrong? I wasn't there to see the game get made. Let me know if you agree in the comments down below if this theory has any validity. But in any case, keep gaming, keep loving Spyro, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.